Hi folks and welcome to Tech with Troy. Today we're going to do a follow-on uh, more extended review of the TechLast F5 that we did an unboxing of a few weeks ago. Um, first of all, let me warn you, this is actually the second uh, copy of this review I did because my original intention was to walk you guys through how to clone and replace your SSD. And as we're going to talk about, um, we ran into some issues, not uh, uh, unresolvable issues, but some issues that uh, I think need to have a part or a discussion uh, component in our uh, overview of our longer time uh, experience with the TechLast F5. And let me start about talking uh, about some of the things I, I still like and I really do like about the machine. First of all, I like its small size. It's easy to move around. Um, it's uh, nice that it's a two-in-one because you can do the uh, tent mode. And by the way, it's um, in the process of going through and doing a battery test right now just to substantiate something else that I'm going to talk about later on. Uh, so we'll see it with this spinning battery on it. Um, you can also, of course, do it in tablet mode, which many of you might do that. Now this uh, particular version that I got did not ship with a capacitive or other type of uh, pen, but my understanding is that you can get ones that work with this fairly easily. Um, I really do like the screen resolution and the brightness and um, by the way it comes with a screen protector installed. Um, several times I've noticed that uh, it's scuffed. I forget that I've got a screen protector. I start worrying that I've scuffed up the screen and uh, I've actually uh, gone back several times and sort of started to pick away at the corner just to make sure that it's on there. Now um, slight downside here is that uh, for whatever reason, you can't really find screen protectors made for this. Remember, it has this big thick bezel on the bottom of the screen here, made for this on Amazon, although there are other parties, uh, Alibaba and a couple of other um, um, Chinese resellers, I think, will have them. There's also a company out of Germany that makes screen protectors for it. Um, I'm really impressed with the speed. The uh, Celeron N4100 chip that it has in it uh, seems to be plenty of power for what most people are going to use this thing for. Um, also, uh, just to mention, didn't realize when I did the uh, original unboxing, but one of the nice things about this thing, uh, which I think I can make it so you can see there, is it has a speaker right there, and it has a similar speaker on the other side. Um, the reason that's nice is, again, given the, the way that you can use this thing in tent mode, in tablet mode, and so forth, uh, I'm glad they didn't put them on the bottom case but rather on the side like that, it gives you the ability to hear them sort of regardless of how you use it. Um, and they do seem to be fairly good little speakers. They don't have a lot of bass in them, but you're not going to get a lot of bass from something this size. Um, I'd also like to point out that, you know, some of my original comments in terms of the placement of the uh, webcam over here in the corner, um, the two-in-one aspect of this machine has caused me to sort of rethink uh, whether that's as bad as I originally thought it was. Um, Primarily, if you'll remember, since this is a two-in-one, a lot of people, when they're doing a web conference or something, uh, probably would go ahead and turn the machine uh, into tent mode, which means that now the webcam is on the upper side and you're not looking up somebody's nose or something. By the way, you'll notice that as I spin and turn this thing, the accelerometers built into the machine are keeping um, up with it and automatically morphing the screen to so that uh, up is up no matter which way I turn the machine. The other thing that I've noticed um, and that I've really uh, been appreciative of is the fact that with 8, gigab 8 gigabytes of RAM installed um, this thing is really uh, pretty good at multitasking. I've had lots of different tabs open, I've run several different programs on it and everything and I'm just really really impressed. The other thing, and I've already actually done this, um, is it is fairly easy as we talked about before to upgrade the SSD and that's because of this little uh, externally available panel that they've got here on the bottom. You simply remove one screw, pop this little access panel off, and then you have a M.2 2242 drive that is fairly easy to upgrade. I think I probably put it to sleep when I turned it over like that. Um, the other thing is, in the, in the process of upgrading the drive, uh, as we'll talk about in just a second, we actually had to reinstall Windows uh, to the new SSD. 
And uh, TechLest actually has a fairly good website. They had both a drive image to download. That drive image was built using uh, Macrium Reflect, which is a program that I was going to use to do the cloning myself. Um, but they also had uh, a whole slate of drivers for the machine. Um, and I will say, by the way, that when I wound up having to reinstall um, Windows, that uh, they're actually, turn off some of the glare here for you guys, um, there actually wasn't much need to install drivers. Um, they seem to use fairly standard components, and the Windows uh, installation disk, installation, installation media, that is, was able to find the default drivers for all those items. I don't know that they're optimized, and I might wind up having to go back and install some additional drivers down the road. So overall, there's lots of things to like about this machine, and I would still recommend it, but I want to be upfront about some of the downsides. First of all, the battery life. One of the reasons I'm running a battery test, or was before I let it go into sleep mode like that, is that I have habitually been only getting two to four hours worth of work out of this. Nowadays, uh, given the um, power sipping features of many uh, new uh, processors and laptops, um, two to four hours just doesn't cut it. doesn't matter what you're doing. You should be getting somewhere between at least five to seven, and in most cases, eight plus. So having a short battery life um, is going to uh, be a, a little bit of a downside uh, from my viewpoint. The other thing that I need to mention too is that even though this machine does use USB, and I guess I can just close it and show all the ports that I want to now. Even though it does use USB-C, it's sort of a non-standard implementation. Not, st not non-standard in the sense of you're going to have any trouble uh, hooking up any components or, or accessing any drives or anything like that. But non-standard in the sense of the wattage that it wants slash expects is not the same as other devices that use USB-C. In particular, um, you're not going to be able to, to swap a USB-C charger for a MacBook back and forth with this guy. And the reason is it's a... Um, 12, uh, 24 watt, that is 12 volt, 2 amp implementation of USB-C. It, it's almost, I have to say, it's almost closer to what a smartphone would put out and it's uh, for, would expect from its charger than what a computer would expect. And the reason I mention it is I've used, uh, I've got several other machines that use USB-C and normally, you know, they might get a little bit upset with you if the uh, wattage that you're providing is too low. Um, but they don't seem to mind if it's too high because they automatically limit it. This guy just doesn't seem to want to charge if the wattage is too high. I haven't damaged it, you know, I haven't, like, uh, it, it, it won't allow you to put too much charge into it, but it, it won't even, like, constrain a higher wattage down to what it wants. It basically is very finicky about either using its original charger or uh, having another charger that's in that same ballpark. Now, because there is only a USB-C port, I've actually been using a uh, dongle, if you will, that uh, takes the USB-C power and passes it through, but also gives me the ability to have uh, USB-A uh, ports as well as an SD card. Um, and I have found that it, uh, I'm, right now I've got it hooked up to the original uh, charger provided by the manufacturer, but I have found that some of the um, 20 to 30 watt chargers that you get that have multiple ports on them for charging your cell phone and other devices at the same time, they do seem to work fine. But like I said, it's like the high-end USB-C chargers that put out 65 volts or volts or, or, or more than that. Um, they just uh, don't seem like something that this laptop is comfortable with. Now, the other thing that uh, I'm going to pick on a little bit here is the placement of the only really <laughs> port that I use, which is USB-C. If you're going to have only one of them, and this machine does, um, given that most folks are right-handed, I would actually put that port over here on the left side, where, remember, the only thing they've actually got in the way of a port is the headphone jack. Um, putting it on the right side means that, particularly for a machine that's small like this, and where there's not much sort of uh, depth to the side of the machine means that uh, as you're using a mouse, the cord is going to get in the way. Um, the other thing that I'm still wondering about is why the heck is there a micro USB port? Now this is like the um, receiving port that you saw on previous generation smartphones. Um, and at first I was thinking, well, maybe you can charge through that guy because there does seem to be something like a little um, uh, power light there. I think this is actually um, 
micro USB power delivery. That is, you could charge something else off of it, um, and you certainly could use it for data connection. But if I had an older, like a, a Galaxy S6 or something smartphone that used a micro USB, I wouldn't have a micro USB on both then. So it seems to be strange that they provided that. Now I have seen other reviews and other um, mentions of this laptop where they say that it is supposed to ship with a micro USB to USB-A, uh, that is the regular old style USB ports like we see on this adapter here. Uh, with a micro USB to USB-A adapter, I did not get such in the box. I didn't see any place for it. And I actually tore apart the packaging pretty thoroughly to make sure that there wasn't such a thing running around in there. Now, another thing that I'm going to uh, ding them on, the outer shell, both the top and the bottom, are made of what feels like aluminum. It's sturdy. Um, there's not a lot of flex in the the screen, um, and I, you know, you can't sort of like wiggle it. Um, if you are wiggling, it's wiggling because of uh, the connection down at the bottom. But I, what I will ding them on is that the upper part of the inside is made of plastic, and it's not too bad right here around the trackpad but particularly around the keys. I don't know if you can see it there. I'm going to hold it up and actually press into it a little bit. Yeah, that's not going to show it to you either. But there is a good deal of flex there. Particularly, it seems, around um, the space bar for some reason. I just feel like when I press down on it, like the whole darn machine is, is moving up and down. Um, so I'm not, uh, you know, the machine was right under $300, so it's, you get what you pay for. Um, I do like the throw on the keys, the sort of, as you depress them, how much they go down, the relative, uh, I won't say clickiness. You can hear them if, if I do that. By the way, the other th weird thing, too, and again, it might be because of the size of the space bar versus everything else, but the other keys, listen to when I hit them. By and large, it's a dull funkiness, but um, which is a good thing. <laughs> but uh, on the space bar, listen, it's clickier, um, and that sort of bugs me. I would expect I'm okay with all the keys being clicky, and I'm okay with none of the keys being especially clicky. I actually prefer them not to be clicky. Uh, since I teach uh, university classes, uh, I actually would prefer that students have quieter keyboards. And when I'm typing and students are doing something, I would rather have a quieter keyboard. But having a discongruity between the lack of clickiness on the rest of the buttons, which I like, and this spacebar, because you're going to hit the spacebar a heck of a lot. and it's just weird having sort of different clickiness factors, if you will, if that's such a thing. Now, um, let's talk about the other thing that was a little bit strange. So the original video that I made for you guys was actually going to show you how I took uh, an SSD. Um, this is actually from Dogfish, which was uh, fairly highly ranked on Amazon. It was fairly cheap, too. I'm not going to go back and look at the price because I actually ordered it a few months ago, and prices have changed a lot since then. But let's just say that it was it was a competitive price. Now, the thing about uh, M.2 2242 slots, which is what this has, um, you can only get a certain size SSD in there. Uh, the longer SSDs, the 2280s that are in... Uh, some other new machines. You can get up to, I believe, four terabytes, but they're expensive as heck. These 2242 drives only go, I think, up to maybe one terabyte. I got a 512 gig drive here. Um, so the original intention was to take this drive, put it in this enclosure from Kingspec, which I've used before, and clone it, and then take the new drive and swap it out for the old. Well, I did that and it booted up fine and um, I used Macrium Reflect um, which I was going to show you now it decides to come back on which I was going to show you um, but the weird thing is even though all of the partitions and there were four partitions on the original SSD drive copied over okay um, when it booted in a lot of the drivers weren't working. In particular, the mouse uh, driver for the touchpad wasn't working. The touch component of the screen wasn't working. The wireless wasn't working. Um, and I downloaded um, all the drivers from TechLast. 
um, and tried to do updates on the fly on the cloned copy of Windows. The problem is I kept getting this weird error message which basically said external backing provider is not recognized. Have no idea what that means. I haven't really run into it before. And basically when I looked at uh, lots of different help sites to see what was going on, uh, it, other people had seen that with different machines before, but the only resolution seemed to be installed a new, copies of Windows, uh, co new copy of Windows. So that's exactly what I did. I basically um, downloaded Windows from Microsoft, put it on a thumb drive, and uh, booted up into the thumb drive. I think you, I can't remember if it's F2 or delete that you press as the machine's booting up to get into BIOS to tell it that you want it to boot off the thumb drive. Um, the weird thing is when I installed Windows off the installation media, it detected everything fine. It found the mouse driver uh, actually at the very start of the install process. It found my wireless. It found everything. Now, um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that since this thing does not have a USB-C, excuse me, a USB-A port, um, to make a bootable medium, you're basically going to need to have something like this. Um, this is a drive made by SanDisk that has a USB-C uh, connector on it. Now the nice thing about this is, particularly if you're upgrading from an older machine, is that it also has a USB-A connector. Um, and this thing is selling for around $28, $29 uh, for a 128 gig version on Amazon right now. Um, so basically I hooked it up to my desktop, which has a lot more USB-A drives to uh, install or to uh, build the Windows boot uh, thumb drive up and then I plugged it into the laptop using the USB-C connector. Um, and the reason is that uh, when I booted up the cloned copy um, it did see some of the ports on here that is I could I could plug in a mouse uh, and it saw I think a uh, uh, wireless dongle that I hooked in here it wouldn't see the SD card and it wouldn't see a USB drive on this guy so I could not use just a regular USB a USB drive um, now overall like I said I've been very happy with the machine um, I think it's I think it's a great value for the money um, just realize that if you do get it and the intention is to upgrade your SSD that you're probably going to be better off if you just take the old SSD out put the new SSD in and then install Windows from other medium. Hope this review has been helpful and if so I'd appreciate it if you get a chance to subscribe to the channel. Take care and look forward to more reviews of this and other items in the future.